What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. We are back on the vertical farm and this has kind of been a big project we Paul and I have been doing this year is uh, hinge cutting, doing some TSI improvements off of uh, this big ridge system. So we started back in April. Paul came in here with the Bobcat and just cleared out all of the underbrush, got all the little junky stuff out of the way. And then we've just been tackling this. It's probably like between a couple of people, probably fifth or sixth time coming up here and doing just a round of hinge cutting. So we got a ton of hickory trees. And you know, a big thing about this farm is it has produced several 200 inch deer. Um, over the years, over the past decade, honestly. And the biggest thing with it is trying to diversify it enough to where enough big deer want to play in the same playground sort of thing. So what doing this will do is increase browse, it'll increase bedding, but it also create um, like a barrier, a bedding area. So more big deer are okay being in a, clo a closer proximity. So all of these big, uh, big dividing lines, like a big ridge system, big river system, you know, big ag fields separate bedding area. So what we're doing is creating a new bedding area, but also creating some separation to hopefully more deer, more big deer want to live closer together. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting this year. I mean, there's a lot of big deer that potentially could be on this farm. So been a couple years since 200 inch deer has been off of it so maybe this year's the year who knows but we're gonna get loaded up and get cutting we're gonna start here and just <clears throat> work off this point just thicken up see what's up up on this main ridge on top like this one right here we just kind of created for more of a barrier visual barrier but as we start getting down we'll get a little bit more strategic for like just good sidewalls and bedding. And then also try not to clog it up too much where they can't get around. A lot of times when people come in here and they start hinging stuff, they just dump one and then dump one on top and then dump another on top and dump another on top. And then it's like when it goes time to like walk through it or like for the deer to walk through it, it's like they don't want to go in it because they can't even walk. It's just like a, a maze so it's good to leave a little some open spaces and it'll grow up and even this vegetation right here this was nothing so it's grown up a little bit um, just being thoughtful about every tree because obviously it took you know 40 years for that tree to grow you should think about it a little bit and be like okay how is this going to help you know rather than not help we'll actually start i think just right here sunlight though that sun was not there so that's another big thing about just you know we, we dumped a bunch of them right there in a pile created some good screening they'll bet all around it but now we got all the sunlight so when it's popping up in the morning it'll be hitting this whole ridge and we're good all this regeneration of growth and browse and cover and it's just good mature timber like this it's uh pretty but it really doesn't do a whole lot for the deer Let's do a couple of those right there. So what we're doing now, we're on the edge of uh, this ag field that kind of leads into some more food plots we got going on. And we are on the west side of this ridge and I'm just kind of feathering this edge by the field. One to create a good barrier between the field and then they just, you know, obviously bedding on this, on this ridge, but so many big old hickories that are blocking so much sunlight in the afternoon for the rest of the hill. So we're just kind of dumping them here. 
and very multi-purpose. You know, a lot of these, they'll live. Um, a lot of them landed are landing pretty good, and they'll live, and they'll start growing up into a bush, and then obviously the undergrowth and everything. My glasses are fogging up. Do you see that? I'm starting to sweat. It's getting hot now, so we're gonna transition from wearing snow pants to uh, hanging a tree stand. We got a tree stand. We wanna go hang in a new spot that we have a food pot cleared out in. So a nice little cedar tree. We're gonna go put a vertical in and see what's up. Okay, I think we're calling this the windmill spot because there's a windmill right there. Um, Came in here, we sprayed this, uh, just a, a little tiny micro plot on the edge of the big ridge where we made uh, the hackberry tree stand, we're calling it, just right on top of the ridge. So we're down low. Access is phenomenal. Honestly, you got a hundred yard walk to where you're gonna park either an e-bike or something, or you, you can drive a truck right to it, park and you come right in. And there's some ag fields out over here. So they kind of, they funnel off this ridge system. We're gonna try to pull them into this little micro kill plot and then uh, took the bobcat, made a good little creek crossing out into the ag fields and stuff. So we have this cedar tree right here. Um, we're gonna have plenty of cover. It is gonna be a pain to get in it, but once I think we're set up in it, it's gonna be really nice. A good, let's see, we would north wind, northeast wind. You could even probably get away with a little bit of a northwest. It's gonna be money. So what I'm gonna do first is I just wanna mark this on my maps on Onyx, so I'm gonna turn on Tracker and I'm just gonna walk around it real quick. So you can see right there, that's our plot. So what I'll do now, is I'll go to Tools, Area Shape, and then I'll use this little pointer guy. I'll actually put in a more final food plot. I just like to keep them marked um, if we ever come back now do food plots, get a quick read of how many acres it is. So we know in case we need to spray it or do whatever, we'll just have a quick, quick read on um, our food plots. So, so that is uh, just almost 1,600 square feet. So a little less than a quarter acre. And we'll go ahead, delete our track. And there we have it. That is the shape of our food plot. I do that pretty much for all the food plots we have just to keep record and accurate records of exactly where they are. So this is the new Overland uh, 2.0 by Vertical. It is, uh, as you guys know, if you guys looked into these at all last year, they were pretty heavy and they were pretty expensive. So what we did is we made them lighter and cheaper. Imagine that. We actually listened to what you guys want. So we did that, and uh, I'm pretty jazzed up. I mean, super, super light. Um, wait, I mean, it's so much better to hang, and we still got the same big platform. So we're gonna get it up in the store. First, we gotta cut all these cedar trees. I hate hanging in cedar trees. But once it's up, they're awesome. And these are our new uh, Trek sticks. So we fixed a couple of the squeaky issues that we're having last year. Our teeth are way more aggressive. And uh, these things are a tank once they're on the tree. Very permanent sets is what I like to call them. It's like you put this up in the tree and, you know, you check on them obviously every year. But it's like we know we're going to have a tree stand in the cedar tree on this food plot always. So we're putting it right up here. And, uh, yeah, once these things bite into the tree, they're pretty gnarly. Good. We have tons of cover. We're just leaving a little bit of cover. I thought it was going to be too tight, but we are good to shoot that full food plot. And it's really easy to get up here now. On to the next. Some of you guys might remember this spot. Riley and I were sitting there when we were hunting the big 11. We were hunting them in this field, um, ultimately killing them in the other field across this, this big ridge. But as you can see, we were not very high off the ground. Couldn't get up really, really high because it would require some more cutting and stuff. But today I think we're gonna get up high because this is the only tree, it's real shrubby all around here. We can't be on that side because of the wind, so we have to be on this side. And like we got those trees right here, like these shrubs, and then this one. So we're kind of limited, but we're gonna try to make the best of it, get up there, probably on one of those Ys up there. See how it works. This is, uh, this is corn that we thankfully 
and fortunately can use for deer hunting. Like we're not harvesting it or anything. So when it comes time to season, like October one, we'll probably knock over some of this corn right here, put in a, put in a rubbing post and be able to draw them in super tight right here. Iowa and you know like the kind of the the emphasis of this little series in the video is like showing some of the the end work before season which the end work to me is food plots and tree stands it's like the final two things you know for fall food, food plots and then you know fixing up hanging tree stands and then after that you kind of just sit and you wait there's so much work that you know goes on in springtime and early summer and stuff for property management wise that we don't really document we don't really do um a whole lot like showing you guys because it's just kind of boring stuff um but it's really uh we're very fortunate very blessed that i'm able to be a part of this farm the vertical farm and kind of see the 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 growth of it over this past year and what we've been able to do to it and this is another example we got another little kill food plot here that's uh brushed out and the weeds are killed and we're ready to drill it in and we're going to put a stand up in here and uh all these little things just add up you know all the the tsi stuff we did this morning that we've done that in a couple other parts and the switchgrass and everything just adds up and it's so different to where if you have a big piece of property where you have control of the deer it's such a different mindset than if you're hunting public and you're just trying to find deer and you're bouncing all around or if you just have a bunch of permission stuff and which we all which I also have um, but if you have multiple smaller like permission properties or maybe you have a lease here and a permission here where you can maybe find a bigger deer but here on this farm you're just trying to grow them so it's very it's a very different mindset um, you're thinking long term and, and thinking uh, just differently and every year also is not going to be a slam dunk year where you have you know big Iowa giants running around every corner uh, like last year, honestly, was kind of a down year for them. So we're really hoping that this year is is a better year. But we're feeling dialed even after today. Those few setups we have is uh, is huge. So I this is a tree we have picked out. It's kind of prepped up, but I'm, I feel like this is going to be a hard time getting in it. I could say you're for two days straight. One bar of service, hopefully it works. Literally had to look for 20 minutes to find a vine, but we hung a vine 15, 20 yards from the stand, right when it funnels out into this big pasture, ag fields. And uh, if they're hammering that, it's gonna be legit. That's a wrap for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Just kind of like us on a day on the farm, just last minute things, tree stands, food plots, the stage is set. We got a vertical, we got a mock scrape, we got a camera and we have a perfectly ready to go food plot. We just gotta come in here, put in some brassicas, and that's the last thing we gotta do for the spot. We can let it sit all the way until October. So we will see you guys next time.